Let's switch it up now and tell you about a problem that at its core really affects every single one of us. The state of Oregon has one of the worst weather radar coverage gaps in the country. I didn't know that, did you? And we're not blaming the forecast of the monstrous snowstorm recently on that lack of weather radar, but that surprise storm is what sparked the idea to look into this story. If you travel south to Lincoln City, there's a huge gap in the radar coverage meteorologists use there, and there's another gap in central Oregon as well. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri tells us if better radar could have helped ahead of that snowstorm and what it means for future forecasts. A better radar coverage would have definitely helped a couple of weeks ago when we saw that cold air move in and of course saw that heavy snow move through throughout much of the metro area. But there is a nearly 200 mile stretch along the Oregon coast where there is no coverage at all from the central Oregon coast all the way down to the southern Oregon coast. Last month's snowstorm was legendary, shutting down the city and forcing drivers to abandon their cars along the side of highways and freeways. Certainly would have helped in the short range. Now, I, I'm not saying it would help in the 48 hour forecast, it won't. But for the zero to six or 12 hours, having a coastal radar could have been useful. This record breaking snowstorm that dropped nearly a foot of snow at the Portland International Airport and nearly eight inches in downtown was tough to track. One part of the problem, Oregon's radar system. Well, it's so bad because the radars aren't there that need to cover that region. And the fact we have terrain, which blocks the radar. So, you know, we have the cascades that are very effective in blocking radar at low levels and the coastal range. I'll admit it wasn't just the poor radar system to blame for the high snowfall totals. But it's a well-known fact that our radar coverage in Oregon is the worst in the lower 48 states. Just take a look at this map that shows how big the gap is in coverage along parts of the coast. There's a Portland radar, okay, which sees the Willamette Valley, but is essentially blocked at low levels by the coastal range. Dr. Cliff Mass, a professor of atmospheric sciences at the University of Washington in Seattle, says there's about 200 miles of coastline that doesn't get picked up by radar. That's the problem. If there's a convective line coming in or a unforeseen low pressure center or whatever, uh, you can't see it coming in on the Oregon coast. Case in point, the Manzanita tornado back in the fall of 2016, when residents only got alerts on their phones that a tornado was coming. So the only real coastal coverage right now in the northwest is from the Langley Hill radar, which uh, we put in. There was a lot of work to get that radar, and that's at Hope William. It's not an easy fix. A new radar for the coast would cost millions of dollars. I have one plan in which we get the radar on Mount Ashland and near Medford, which is not doing very, very well because it's so high. Move that to the coast and put a less expensive radar there in Medford. Mass says it'll take political movement to get things done. You need your U.S. senators from Oregon to push this very hard. It could happen, but they will have to do that. There's also a gap in coverage in parts of central Oregon. Right now, there are three radar sites in Oregon, one not far from us along Highway 30 near Scappoose, near Pendleton, and another in Medford. In downtown Portland, Joe Ranieri, KGW News. Well, Joe certainly knows a thing or two about weather around here, and so does this guy, Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino. You've been thinking about that radar gap for some time. Oh, yeah, Pat. This has been a, in discussion within the meteorological community in Oregon for quite some time now, and there have been efforts underway to try to fill the gap and get a, a weather radar sighted on the Oregon coast. But as Dr. Mass said, it takes a lot of political will to make that happen. And so far, uh, the effort has been stuck, I don't know, in Congress or somewhere. So let's go back to the map here and talk about the gaps that we have in Oregon. The one in central Oregon is problematic in the wintertime. In the summertime, when we get big thunderstorms, those develop high enough in the atmosphere that the Medford and the Pendleton radars can see most of those. It's really a cold season issue here where we miss things because that's happening at lower elevations and the radar beam shoots over the top of the weather. And then there's the gap here on the coast that we were Joe was discussing in his story. Now, if you look at the the uh, Langley Hill radar, which is the new one on the Washington coast, the next one on the coast is all the way down at Eureka, California. That's a 450 mile stretch between the radar sites. There is coverage there. And in fact, the Manzanita tornado that Joe also referenced, that was warned off of the Langley Hill or the Washington coast radar. Even though the Portland radar is closer, the warnings were generated by the information coming from that Washington Coast radar. So that's how valuable they are. Other storms have been missed because of that gap in coverage there on the coast of Oregon. So it is a big deal here. Now I'm going to zoom out a bit. Let's look at the East Coast. 
<laughs> Don't see any gaps here, no, do we? No. no. Now, you know, look, there's a lot more people that live here and they have to worry about hurricanes. But, but I tell you what, there is zero gaps in coverage in the east and the big gaps are all here in the west. There's also a big gap in Nevada, sparsely populated. OK, maybe, but not so much anymore as things continue to grow. Now, Dr. Mass's idea and I love the creative thinking about moving that Medford radar. It's on the top of Mount Ashland. If you've ever skied there, you've seen it. It's that big white ball. But he's right, it sits at 7,500 feet, which is great for the Rogue Valley for covering severe thunderstorms in the summer. Can see those really well. But that's exactly why that's never going to get moved. They need that there to cover those severe storms in the summer across Southern Oregon here. So for the gap on the on the coast of Oregon, uh, Pat, again, it's going to take a lot of political will. You got any? Y y well, yeah, but I mean, let's do it. How much does it cost to put a radar up? Get a tower and a ball and off you go. You know what? I, I actually spoke to the, the head of the National Weather Service, the guy that is in charge of remote sensing. That would be this would be his purview, this kind of this kind of, uh, of equipment, right? And, and I was down at Cape Canaveral actually covering the launch of the new weather satellite that was happening back in 2016. And I asked him about this and he kind of just alluded to, you know, we're kind of going away from terrestrial based sensing or remote sensing devices because they're expensive, so to speak. However, if you look at the cost of one tornado or one storm, it'll far outweigh the cost of putting in a radar. You have to maintain it, of course, so there's good. There's an annual cost in maintaining a radar and the upgrades and everything that goes with it. Um, but the let's do it attitude. Yeah, we're all for it, but it, it's a big get. Yeah, man, it's OK. Not going to happen. All right. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. You bet.